Now that we have the support for MVC framework added in our ASP.NET Core program.cs file, in this video, let's add a controller in order to handle the request. As you can see, our controller is the first thing that meets the request. So let's go ahead and add a controller. So there could be many controllers in any applications. So therefore, the convention is to create a folder that is called controllers. And then we can add our controller over here. So right click and add controller. Here we can add a empty controller. Click on add. And we can just keep the name as this. Just call it home controller. And click on add again. Now you can see that we have our home controller class created derived from controller base class. The space class comes from the SP.NET Core MVC namespace. And it has a default method created, which is called index. A public method enter a controller is usually called a action method. Any action method is used to handle request. When a request comes into the server, it will be mapped to one of the controller's action methods. So in this case, we have this index action method. So how do we map a request to this particular action method? If we go to our program.cs file. You can see that we have a mapping pattern here. This means that if we provide a URL that follows this pattern, then the first part it refers to the name of the controller. The second part, it refers to the name of the action method. And the third part is optional. If it is provided, then it refers to the parameter of the action method. So in this case, we have a home controller. So the name of the controller is home. And the name of the action method is index. So therefore, the URL pattern to map to this particular action method is slash home slash index. Let's simplify this action method to return a string, just like before. And I'm going to say hello world from action method. And let's give it a try. So if I go to slash home slash index and hit enter, then you can see that this hello world from action method is displayed here. In fact, if we remove the URL pattern here and just load from the root, we can still hit the same page. Why is that? Let's go back to the program.cs file and observe this pattern once again. So you can see that this part refers to the controller, this part refers to the action, but both of them has a default value, which means that if we don't specify this part, then the controller is the home controller. If we don't specify this part, then the action method is the index action method. And we happen to have a home controller, which corresponds to this. And we happen to have an index method, which corresponds to this index method. So therefore, if we don't specify any URL, then still this action method is triggered and the hello world from action method string is returned. If I create another action method, and let's just call it error, and let it just return a string. I have an error here. In order to let this action method to handle the request and return the string, we can just run the application and then specify slash home slash error. And then you can see I have an error here. So therefore, we can say that a controller is basically just a grouping of different action methods. It is the action method that handles the request. So if we look at our first diagram over here, any traditional web application frameworks will need to do these three different things, mapping to a particular function, and then the function handles the request. That's the first and the second tasks. In our MVC application framework, we are able to map the request by using this setup and a specified mapping pattern over here. That accomplishes the first task. And also, we have the action methods that can handle a HTTP request. And that accomplishes the second task. Okay, that's everything I want to cover in this video. I will see you in the next one.